So the first recommendation that I have is to calm down. There's a lot of uh, excitement uh, and uh, maybe some angst, some uh, concern out in the mar marketplace. And this is not something that uh, is uh, necessarily going to move very, very quickly. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, changes that are proposed that are happening. There are some that have already taken place legislatively, particularly, particularly here in the United States, where we have uh, some states that have now taken actually some legislative action. But even uh, with the legislative action, uh, there's still some time that's uh, going to be uh, taken to sort things out and uh, figure out what uh, what really needs to be done. So the idea here is to calm down, uh, relax. Uh, you probably hear a lot of discussion, a lot of talking, but uh, look for action. That's what you really should be doing here. Tail of carbon clean agents aren't going away anytime soon. Halon uh, was uh, banned from manufacture in Article One countries back in December 31st, 1992 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and today we're still seeing systems that are using Halon uh, uh, decades later. So I'm not suggesting that uh, things will be taking that long uh, for what's happening today regulatorily, but um, it, it, uh, it doesn't move very, very quickly. So the important thing is, is that halo, halocarbons are not going away anytime soon in my, uh, in my estimation. Uh, one of the uh, mitigating factors that uh, took place was back in December when 3M made an announcement that they were exiting not just uh, FK5112 manufacturer, but they were exiting the manufacture of their fluorochemical line of products completely. And that was by 2025. So that was uh, uh, a bit of a shock to the, to the, uh, uh, in, uh, to the uh, industry and, uh, and it, particularly to the people that, that worked, uh, work at uh, 3M. Uh, they, uh, especially the ones that are supporting that business, they uh, basically were blindsided. They didn't know uh, that this was, this was coming. So, but uh, 3M has continued to honor their commitments. And at this point in time, let me just uh, make a, a statement about myself. Um, most, many people may know that I worked at 3M for like, like John indi indicated for 30 years. Uh, and uh, just to let everybody know, I have no contractual relationship with 3M other than my uh, retirement benefits and so forth, but no contractual business relationship whatsoever with 3M. So any comments that I'm making uh, with regard to 3M uh, is uh, my own comments. It has nothing to do with, uh, with 3M. And I really won't make any uh, particular opinions on what 3M, 3M's decision to do what they did, other than to say that uh, it wasn't really, especially from an FK5112 standpoint, it wasn't a, a performance uh, issue or supply issue is more on the manufacturing side. Uh, that's where uh, their issues may have uh, resided. So I just want to make sure I cleared that up with everybody. Uh, but the important thing here is that there are plenty of sources of FK5112 supply. Uh, FK5112 is the ASHRAE nomenclature that is used in the standards for NFPA 2001 and ISO 14520. Uh, so, and uh, Nova 1230 fluid uh, manufactured by 3M uh, would go by that uh, ASHRAE nomenclature. So irrespective of 3M's action, uh, the uh, FK5112 supply is readily available. So, and if that doesn't really calm you down, then uh, you can consider the other technologies that are available uh, in the marketplace uh, uh, that may solve your, resolve your fire protection uh, issues that you may have and uh, provide you with a solution. So the future supply of FK5112, the important thing is, is that uh, the product is established in the market. It's been around for over two decades uh, uh, from 3M and now uh, with other manufacturers. There's in excess of 100,000 systems installed uh, in the past 20 years and maybe even more than that since, uh, since I retired from 3M. Uh, one of the things that uh, you may or may not know is that the 3M Novik 1230 fluid patent expired in July of 2020. Uh, and uh, when that happens, typically, especially if a product is successful, and the Novik 1230 fluid certainly is in this marketplace, um, other manufacturers uh, uh, gear up to 
uh, begin manufacture of the product so that they may join the, uh, the market. And that's what happened. We had uh, multiple manufacturers uh, supplying C6 fluoroketone globally. And reportedly, if you go on the UL website, the last time I checked, it's been a little while now, but uh, there were 13 uh, entities that had a UL component recognition with a FK5112 and nine uh, with, a, with an FM global approval. Uh, so that may have changed. There may be some, uh, another one that may have uh, shown up, but irrespective of 3M's action, the important thing is that there's ample supply. So if you have systems that are specified using uh, uh, Novik 1230 fluid or FK5112, uh, you'll be able to continue to, to, to fulfill that uh, obligation. So the important, other important thing to note here is that FK5112 remains an acceptable fire suppression uh, solution uh, be used uh, where clean agents are necessary, uh, especially halocarbon clean agents. Uh, and, and, and it's uh, uh, acceptable per the US EPA uh, via their SNAP program, significant new alternatives policy program and uh, NFPA 2001. And I should probably also add uh, that it's also included in the ISO 14520 standard that's uh, used in the, particularly in Europe and then other standards that uh, may be based off of the NFPA 2001 or ISO 14520. So uh, the important, another important thing here to note is that uh, the, this issue, and this is one of the reasons why you may want to just, the, my recommendation of calming down is that no comments were submitted to the NFPA gaseous fire extinguishing committee that would affect FK5112 in terms of its supply or restrictions of any way. Uh, it was just not a, not a topic for discussion in the standard. We just had that meeting here, uh, I think it was about a month or so ago. Uh, and it's still listed as acceptable, subject to re the restrictions that uh, are in the NFPA, or in, in the US EPA SNAP program, same as other commercial clean agents. So it's, uh, it's still uh, acceptable and um, uh, what still applies is what was in the Federal Register from back in 2002 when uh, it was first commercialized as at Novik 1230 fluid. And this is a statement that was in the Federal Register at that time. The US EPA reviewed the potential environmental impacts of this substitute and has concluded that by comparison to Halon 1301 and other acceptable substitutes, uh, C6 perfluoroketone, FK5112, significantly reduces overall risk to the environment. So you can see some of the other things. So, but it, uh, the important thing is that it reduces overall risk to the, the public health and the environment and the end use listed. That was what uh, the EPA had at that time and that uh, still is uh, uh, applicable today. Uh, so <clears throat> you can see the, the number of, uh, of brand names that are uh, in the column there, the second column that's for C6 perfluoroketone. This is right off this US EPA SNAP website. And, uh, uh, it's still acceptable and still continues to be there. So if you go to the website, you'll, you can, you'll see this.